Hello and welcome to this bonus build guide video for my Kerbal Space Program 2 video series for science. Um, so in this video we are going to be creating this which is a very basic rover. Um, it's quite a simple thing and I am planning on taking this to the Tylo mission. So the reason I'm doing this video is because I don't want to have to do this during the actual uh, build video for the main rocket. So we can do this video now and then we can just merge it into the actual build. But uh, anyway, yeah, like I said, this is a very basic rover. As you can see, it's got two seats. It's got the Science Junior Junior and the... Uh, um, sample grabber as well and uh, yeah it's got everything pretty much that we need to actually uh, get to the surface and back and because we're using the rove mate we also have a uh, antenna on this as well and that just basically means that once we have left it on the surface of whichever moon we want to go to or whichever planet uh, we can actually go back in the future and uh, do more science so yeah like i said this is what we're going to be building so let's get straight into the uh, build so the first thing we need to do is we actually need to buy a bit of science. So we're going to go to the research and development building. And naturally we need to buy rovers and we also need to buy autonomous sampling. And that's pretty much all we need for this build. Um, I am actually going to go all the way down to the large payloads later on just so that we can actually uh, test it in the uh, large um cargo bay which is what we're actually going to be pop popping in but if you wanted to just pop this on the bottom of a sky crane then you don't need to do that but we'll do that uh off screen when we are actually doing the build so yeah like i say let's get into the actual build itself right so the first thing we're going to do is we'll go to command and we will grab the rover mate guidance unit and uh, that just means that once we leave the rover on whichever planet we're leaving it on uh, then we can go back to it in the future and use it as an autonomous rover to get even more science if we want to uh, so naturally we are going to need wheels as well so we'll first of all go to structures and we're going to grab the m beam 650 and pop that on the front and then if we go to ground we're going to grab the Rove Max M1. We're going to go to Radial Symmetry. And then we are going to pop two on the back. And of course, we're also going to pop two on the front. And we need to make sure they are the correct uh, orientation. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to move them inboard so that the ends of the suspension arms are actually touching so we'll do that now and uh, the reason for this is we are actually planning on putting this inside of the large cargo bay so we'll make sure that they are touching and apart from the fact that it will fit in the large cargo bay it also looks better in my opinion than having really wide wheels so we'll pull this out so we can actually see what we're doing and yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to grab, uh, well, we're going to add an engine or a battery even. So we'll go to electrical. We'll grab the Z400 battery. We'll go back to uh, snapping. And then we are going to pop one of these on the top of the uh, M-beam or I-beam, whichever one. So we'll pop that there. We are going to move things around just to make them look a bit better, but we'll get everything on the rover first. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to add a reaction wheel. Uh, so we'll go and grab the SRW125, and the reason we are adding a reaction wheel is that if we flip the rover, then we can just activate the reaction wheel and then actually um, flip it back onto its wheel. So before we move it into uh, position, we're going to right-click on it, and we're going to turn off torque, because if we leave torque on, then when we start trying to move, it's actually going to try and flip the uh, rover. Um, but yeah, anyway, then we are going to just move it up into the rove, mate. And we're going to move it towards the back as well, because it can be quite front heavy, can this rover. So if we have this at the back, then it adds an extra bit of weight to the back. And uh, it should be fairly stable. So I'm just going to get that into the position I want it. I'm also going to just quickly move the actual uh, back wheels forward a bit. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of science. So we'll start off by grabbing the Science Junior Junior. And if we have our snapping back on again, then we know we will be able to get it nice and central. So once it is flat, we know we're in, right in the middle of the rove, mate. We're then going to flip it over so that it is flat to the actual uh, chassis. And we're also going to bring it up a little bit as well and pull it back. And then we're also going to add the sample grabber too. 
Uh, now for this one, we're actually going to turn the uh, snapping off because as you can see, as we go towards the edge, it starts to uh, rotate it. So if we turn snapping off, then it will actually snap just to the top of it and it's much easier to actually position things. So we'll flip that around so it is in this orientation. We're also going to make sure it's right at the back and it's actually clipping into the uh, Science Junior a little bit as well. So we're going to move that forwards and we'll have everything in the final position once we actually have the uh, seats which we're going to add now. So we'll go back to command. We will go to the bottom and grab the grumble seat. And then if we go back to radial symmetry but leave the snapping off, then what's going to happen is it's going to snap them nice and evenly on either side. And we're going to make sure that they are right towards the edge of the actual rove mate because then what that does is it spreads the kerbals out and the uh, their helmets won't end up clipping together. But yeah, so the only other things we really need is first of all we need an antenna so we can actually communicate with this. So we'll go to communication and grab the Communitron DTS M1 and then if we pop snapping back on and go to one symmetry we can know we're right in the center. Now we're just going to move this towards the back so that it is actually uh, well at the back of the rover instead of all the way at the front like that. And you can see it is floating a little bit above as well. So I'm just going to move this around a little bit so it is exactly where we want it. And then we're just going to right click on it and, and extend the antenna just to make sure it's facing in the right direction. And it is. I mean, I know everything clips together a bit and that could bother some of you, but uh, generally it's it. We're trying to make it nice and uh, compact. Um, but yeah, the only other things we need to add then are some ladders to the side so we can actually get back onto the rover when we need to. So we'll go back to utility and we're going to grab the uh, small fixed ladder and we're going to pop two of these on the sides. Go into radial symmetry. And it looks to me like the... Uh, seats could do with being brought back a little bit as well so i'm just going to pull these back i'm also going to sort out the front now as well so that everything is as we want it so we'll move the wheels forwards a little bit we'll also move the uh, battery forwards and then we're going to move the actual m beam all the way back and like i say we are planning on putting this into a uh, large um cargo bay so we're going to check that out in a moment but if we want to we can also add lights while we're here so we'll go and grab the small net or extra small narrow beam spotlight we'll pop a couple on the front here and i'm actually going to move them forwards so that they are right on the front of the rover and then we're also going to pop a couple on the back and we don't really need the ones on the back but i like to pop them on here uh, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to turn off the light blue and light green so that the lights are red and they kind of look like brake lights but yeah so that is all of the uh, parts actually added to the rover so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to check it to make sure that everything is lined up so as you might be able to notice the front wheels are actually a bit higher than the back wheels and that isn't necessarily an issue uh, but if we want to have everything nice and flat and lined up what we can do is we can click on this box on the bottom left and then that will bring us into the blueprint section and then if we move the uh, entire rove mate up or the entire rover up so the rear wheels are flat onto one of the lines we can then use the rotate and translate tool to grab the actual M beam and move the entire front of the rover down so it's all nice and level. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And then the only other thing we want to do is we want to, want to actually make sure that this will fit inside of a large cargo bay. So before we actually get the cargo bay, and I have actually gone back into the research and development building and bought the large cargo or large payload so we can actually do this. Uh, but what the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go to coupling. We're going to grab the small stack decoupler and we're going to flip this so that it is pointed down. And we want it pointing down because if it was pointing up then when we decouple it it will stay attached to the rover and it looks a little bit weird uh, so we'll do that we're actually then going to grab the uh, entire rover and we're going to connect this to the uh, 
uh, decoupler and then we will use the rotate and translate tool to move the rover down so that it's underneath the decoupler and we're also going to move it back a little bit so the decoupler is nice and central as well and then because it looks a little bit silly the way it just kind of floats in midair like that what we can also do is if we go to structure we can grab these struts and we can actually put some of these on so that it looks a little bit like it's actually hanging from the decoupler so we'll pop two on the back and connect them to the decoupler like that and then we'll also pop two on the front and add them like that and it just looks like it's actually being suspended as opposed to just like say hanging in midair so yeah now that is done what we'll do is we'll make sure that the decoupler is the uh, root part and if it's not the root part then you can just go to launch uh, well, assembly anchor and click on the uh, decoupler and that will make sure that is the root part because then what we're going to do now is we're going to just basically build the uh, bottom half of the actual rover or the lander that i'm going to use so i'm going to go to payloads and i'm going to grab the cbs uh large payload or large um what is it cargo bay and then we're going to pop two of these here we're going to open the top one and we are going to actually grab the rover and connect it to the uh top inside node of the actual cargo bit and now we can have a look to see how the wheels are doing so you can see we could probably move the rover back a little bit because the wheels are clipping into the uh, cargo bay a little bit so we'll do that and it's just about sizing everything so that it's not all clipping together too much because it can make things a bit janky when you're trying to actually decouple it so we're going to move the front back a little bit as well Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And now, uh, the only other thing I would say is that when creating a rover, if you're planning on putting it on the bottom of a lander or even the, uh, you know, like a sky crane type thing, what we want to do is we want to right click on the wheels and we actually want to uh, bottom out the spring strength and damper strength because then when we actually decouple it, it's not going to bounce like crazy and end up breaking anything. So, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And I'm just going to finish building the bottom of this, uh, well, the lander, essentially. And then we're going to take it out to the runway and give it a quick test. Right, so now we are on the runway, we can do a quick test. So we'll start off by turning the brakes on, uh, just so it won't run away with us when we drop it. And then we will hit the decoupler and drop onto the surface. And you can see that because the... Uh, suspension was bottoms out then it didn't bounce whereas if we'd have had auto suspension on then it probably would have bounced so we'll right click on the wheels now and hit auto suspension just so that we can actually control it because if we leave it bottomed out then it's not very easy to control um, and as you can see you can also change other uh, parameters as well we can turn the traction level up if we want we can also turn the auto friction level up um, we could also, if we wanted to turn the steering off on the back wheels and the uh, engine off or the motor off on the front wheels, and that would actually uh, give us a rear wheel drive car. But we're going to leave it four wheel drive and four wheel steering for now. Uh, but yeah, let's give it a quick test. So we'll turn the brakes off and we will get up to speed and see what happens when we go to full brakes. And you can see that because we have uh, spaced the seats out nicely, then the uh, Kerbal's helmets aren't clipping together. But anyway, now we're getting up to speed, we will uh, hit the brakes and see what happens. Ooh, and you can see that it has flipped it over. Um, so the best way to get around that I've found is if we just right click on the wheel and reduce the braking power to about 50%, then uh, we should be, well, it shouldn't flip when we actually try and stop. So now that's done, we'll do another test. there we go you can see now even though it took a little longer to stop we didn't flip so we're not likely to break anything and the most uh, at risk thing of breaking on this is the actual sample arm um, but yeah that looks pretty good to me so there is just one last thing I would like to uh, mention uh, if you find like for example if you take this rover or any rover onto a low gravity planet then you might find that it's a bit difficult to actually um, get up to a reasonable speed uh, you don't want to be going too fast so instead of just tapping the W key to move forward what we can actually do is we can hit the caps lock button or key and what that does is it sets us into the fine control mode which then means if we hold down w 
we're only going to accelerate very slowly we're also only going to steer very slowly as well so it makes it less responsive but it also makes it more stable in low gravity environments but anyway yeah i'm not sure what all this lag is about but uh, yeah let's get back to the vab because i've just realized there is one thing i've forgotten to do and i've actually forgotten to put some solar panels on so we need to pop some solar panels on it just so that we actually uh, can recharge the battery when we need to but yeah let's get back to the vab and do that and then finish off the build So yeah, let's add a couple of solar panels. Now, we can use the extendable ones if we want, but I think they look a little bit silly. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm first of all going to remove the actual rover from the uh, uh, decoupler just so that we can actually see what we're doing. And then we are going to add three solar panels onto the top here. So we'll start off by grabbing the extra small solar panel We'll make sure that the snapping is off and we are on radial symmetry and we're going to pop two on the side there. We're also going to grab one more and pop one in the middle and we're going to need to move these around a bit. So we'll raise this one up and we'll try and get it nice and central on top of the uh, Science Junior Junior. And then we'll do the same with these. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to just rotate them a little bit and try and tilt them out to the side. Just uh, one, because I think it looks a little bit better. And two, in theory, we should be able to get a little bit more like, exposure with the sun when we need. So we'll just move these around, make sure the uh, they are nice and centrally spaced and that the uh, Science Junior isn't actually clipping through them. And yeah, so that looks pretty good to me. So yeah, that is pretty much uh, everything there is for this build. Um, obviously, it did look a little bit strange the way that the um, struts were actually uh, hanging on the side of the rover. So we can move them around. Like If we were to flip them over like this, then it would probably look a little bit better. Or you can just like clip them in board and then it won't look quite as weird. But that's all things we can spend as much time as we like doing when it comes to it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, as I say, that's pretty much everything there is for this rover build. So I am going to be using this on my Tylo mission. Uh, the reason I'm taking it is because I've found that landing directly on top of the target is a little bit of a challenge. So if we have a rover, then we've got a little bit more time. Um, well, we've got a little bit more flexibility so we can actually drive to the target if we need to. And of course, then, as I said earlier, we can leave the rover on the surface. And if we need any more science in the future, we can uh, drive around and get a bit more science. But anyway, yeah, like I said, that's everything there is for this particular build. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, then please feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will see you in the next one.